Assalamualaikum and hi, I am Haida and I will be talking about aviation industry in the third world countries. Third world countries is a phrase commonly used to describe a developing nation. The phrase itself arose during the Cold War to identify countries whose views did not align with NATO and capitalism or the Soviet Union and communism. The concept of the third world has somehow become outdated in the recent years as it no longer represents the current political or economic state of the world. Due to some common background of the countries itself somehow, they are now mentioned as the developing countries or the developing nations. As for the aviation industry, there are two main things that are usually being seen. The movement of perishable goods and also the development of the tourists. From a logistic overall supply chain perspective, this traffic requires two things. First, specialized infrastructure and also an institutional settings which to minimize delays and smooth service flow. Tourism contributed by four main things, rising global income, increased leisure time, longer life expectancy and lower transportation costs. As for lower incomes and smaller island economies is to generate foreign income and also a labor intensive. Despite the development, level of air transportation provision is generally poor in these developing countries. While resource constraints are an issue, the fact that there are 53 independent nations, each with its own traffic rights, which many have conventionally chose to exercise in a very restrictive manner. As for airport services, in developing countries, they are not numerically short in airports, but they tend to be extremely poor in quality, where they provide rudimentary commercial air transportation services. But there will be problem with this airport, which they usually don't have concrete runways, unrecognizable terminal buildings, limited control tower and limited landing aids, and also problem for train staffing. As for the smaller island economies, state provision is justified. Importance of ensuring adequate facilities to allow air transportation to exist for tourism growth. For airports, they are exist in a value of change that is highly regulated. Any deregulation and privatization push pressures on airlines to act more commercially and also put another element in the chains to also change. It is difficult for airports to cream revenues from carriers that are not monopolies nor generally state-owned. Airlines can now voice out through very channels expressing concerns over the performance of a transportation infrastructure provider. There are constraints on reform in developing countries. The inherent challenges are even greater in the most lower income countries. We break it down to three. First, the resource availability. Second, the governance. And third, the social attitudes. The changes in developing countries take time for the demonstration effects to work their way through the system. Institutional structures in most developing countries tend to move very slow. This is due to the lack of efficient governance. As a factor of the cause, prevailing uncertainties of ultimate effects, many countries are unwilling to take on the possibility of having to contend with the significant stranded costs in situation of large budget deficits and high unemployment. In the current basis, airport can still generate revenue to a variety of market mechanisms, but which are available differ to according a number of factors, and in many cases, even in the future. Many developing countries will may not pursue to the same extent the range of the options open to private and more commercial driven state-owned airports in wealthy nations. As might be expected, individual countries vary in such thing as broader matter of regulatory philosophy, the physical and economic state of their air transportation infrastructure. As for the future, the development countries that have relatively sophisticated financial system should be taking measures on privatization and liberalization on other sectors. They often have large air transportation network that could transcend their national borders. This should be given them advantage to carry on throughout to the other part of the world. That's all I got for you guys today and I hope you guys will benefit from this video. See you guys soon.